Hey guys, I'm doing Kev Tech here, bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Sunday. And today I want to go over Office 365 admin roles. Obviously, if you're new to my channel, you know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, follow me. I do IT support videos, I do desktop support videos. Sometimes I interview people, I do a bunch of different things. All right. So let me share my screen with you and go over it. So let's do that real quick. Screen one. So today we're going to go over Office 365 Exchange admin roles. Uh, they are role-based permissions in Exchange Server. The permissions that you grant to administrators and users are based on the on management roles. A role defines a set of tasks that administrator uses that like users can perform or users can perform. For example, a management role called mail recipients defines a task that someone can perform on a set of mailboxes, contacts, distribution groups. When a role is assigned, when a role is assigned to an administrator or user, that person is granted the permissions provided by that role. So what does that mean in, in a sense, right? Like, Kevin, okay, what does that mean? So I'm gonna show you in, in Google Chrome. So basically you have the ability to grant the, 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 the IT help desk or service desk or whoever is working with Exchange Admin Center, you have the ability to grant them certain permissions to do certain things. Because as, as a sysadmin, right, we don't wanna give them access to everything because if you have access to everything, you could probably break the server or you could probably break the mailboxes. So we want to give them limited access to limited things, if that makes sense. So that's the reason why I'm going over this today, because you want to have some sort of permission limitation for the help desk folks that are trying to do changes on Exchange Admin Center. All right. Next slide. So the two types of roles. So there's the administrator roles. These roles contain permissions that can be assigned to administrators or specialized users using role groups that Manage a part of exchange organizations such as recipients, servers, or databases. Then there is end user roles. These roles assign these roles assign using role assessment policies enable users to manage aspects of their own mailboxes and distribution groups that they own. Role role groups and group uh, role groups and role assignment policies. Sorry about that. Uh, role groups enable you to grant permissions to administrators, specialized users. Uh, role administrate role assignment policies. Role assignment policies enable you to grant permissions to end users to change settings on their own mailbox or distribution groups that they own. Then these are all the permissions that are built in on Exchange Admin Center. Obviously, I'm not going to go over it here. I'm going to go over it on Google Chrome. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to close out of that. Close out of that. Right. And here it is. So there is. I'm going over admin rules today. Right. So there is compliance. Discovery management, exchange service admin, help desk, help desk admin. They will probably give you access to this one. So this one has reset passwords, user options, review only recipients. These are the things you could do on it. So that you'll probably have access to that. Or this one, it doesn't really have a lot of access. So depending on your sysadmin, depending who you're working with, you may have certain access, you may not. Like this one has recipient management, right? So it has the ability to just create, to assign distribution groups, mail recipients, migration, move mailboxes, recipient policies, reset passwords, team mailboxes, et cetera, et cetera. Then there's records, management, there's security administration, security operator, security reader, tenant admins, UM management. So this is, uh, uh, if you want to say, what is this? This is unified messaging system. So this is like, if you, if you uh, sync uh, Cisco call manager together with Exchange, you could actually do that and you actually have access to change voicemail uh, pins and voicemail um, passwords for someone if, they're, if, if this is uh, integrated with uh, Cisco call manager, which in the future, I'll make a video on Cisco call manager. You're going to enjoy that. But right, right now, it's going to go over Exchange, okay? So why is this important? Because you could actually create different, uh, different groups here as a sysadmin, you don't want to give them access to everything, right? So I could go in here, right? And I could call this help desk, for example, right? Let's just call it help desk. Uh, and then this is uh, help desk roles, right? And then I hit the plus sign right here. And then I could actually give people limited access to limited things. So like this is address and enables administrator to manage address lists, the application role and person it uses in the organization, archive option, audit logs, compliance, admin, data loss prevention, distribution groups, email address policies, 
federated sharing, if information rights management, journaling, legal holds, legal hold application, mail enable public folders, mail recipient creation, mail recipients, mail tips, mailbox import, export, mailbox search. And then I could go on and on with all these other different things, which I'm not going to do today because I'm going to bore you to death if I do that. But this is very important because then you can add someone in here, right? And then you can only give them limited access to, to whatever you want pretty much. So that's why this is very important. You need to know and understand why this works and how this works, because I know it's not helped us, but you may be required to do that as a sysadmin. You may be required to give limited access to, to someone that works helped us. You may want to only give them access to just view the dashboard and only have access to mailboxes. You may want them to only have access to create distribution groups. So that's why this is super duper important. And that's the reason why I'm going over this thing, because you want to you want to put limitations on the permissions because you don't know what they might have access to that might break something. You don't want to give them access to everything. We don't do that in, in, in IT world. We give them limited access. And don't confuse that with um, uh, Office 365 permissions. So this is separate from from uh, Exchange. Exchange and Office 365 permissions are two separate things. I'm going to show you what I mean by that, OK? Let me share my screen again. So I was like, Kev, what are you talking about? So if you go here, right, and you go to office.com, right? And if you go into admins, I'm not sure what I mean by that. If you go to users and you go to active users, right? Uh, let's just go to my account, right? This is my account. And you go into roles, right? See versus roles, manage roles. Don't confuse that with this. This is different, see? This is not the same as the permissions in here. These are two separate things. So don't confuse that with this. And if you actually, if you highlight it, it tells you like has unlimited access. All the people that, that might work help desk or IT support or service desk, you may have access, you may not have access, but they may have access to this. This is, this is what I have access to in my job. This is something that you may have access to, you may not. So this is full access to exchange admin, online increased managed groups, managed service requests and monitor service health. So you may have access to this, or you just may have access to view only, like you're only able to read stuff and that's it and change passwords. And that, that's all you, you know, they give you access to, unfortunately. So depending where you work, your access may be limited. Your access may be a little bit of everything. So that's the reason why I have to go over this. But this is, this is, two, this is separate, right? This is not the same as this. These are two separate things. Just keep that in mind. These are two separate things. So that's why I'm going over this today because they're two, two, two different things. So that's the reason why I, I, I talk about admin roles and I'm gonna stop sharing again. Talk about admin roles and how it works because you, you, you wanna give them limited access. You don't want someone having access to everything. We don't do that in IT and we try to set limitations to people because we don't want anyone breaking the server, if that makes sense. And that's it, that's pretty much it for today. With that being said, I hope you guys have a good day. Uh, I greatly appreciate it that you guys are watching my videos and I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday. And for anyone that's brand new, I suggest you watch my Office 365 90-day developer mode and how to get Office 365 for free. I'm going to leave below in the description of the video. And then you can play around with this and look at all the permissions, okay? With that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Take care. Peace.